Look what we've got, the new brand new MacBook Pros. These are the M4 editions, and I've got two different versions here. I've got the 16 inch with an M4 Pro chip and the MacBook Pro 14 inch with a regular M4. Now I myself personally spec'd my version out to the 14 inch M4 Max version with 128 gigs of RAM and eight terabytes of storage, which for me is probably actually a little excessive at this point, but I cannot wait to check that one out. Now the thing that I need to tell you if you're kind of new to like, hey, I'm trying to find a new MacBook or I'm trying to find a new computer. The M4 chip is the latest and greatest, but if you do have an M1 or any of the new Apple Silicon chips, you are miles and miles ahead of the previous Intel chips. Like the difference that it has made is so significant that just me telling you or even showing you, you're not going to understand until you actually try it out. So if you still do have an Intel Mac and you are looking to upgrade, this is the best time ever. I do feel like if you have one of the new Apple Silicon chips in your devices, you're probably pretty good to go with anything that you would need. Most likely if you do have an M3, you probably don't need to upgrade to an M4. Do you need to? No. Maybe you want to? Yes. These new devices are just so fast and I cannot wait to check them out. So let's quit talking and open them up and see what we've got. Let's start with the 14 inch. Oh. So this is the 10 core CPU GPU with 32 gigs of memory and two terabytes and also nano texture. Oh, opening a new MacBook. Oh, it smells so good. It's just like, it's such a magical experience. Here it is. This is the space black. So pretty. We've also got a space black power cable, which I actually forgot that they do color match because I really don't use the MagSafe cables. I know, I know. We all wanted MagSafe to come back and I just don't use it. I'm always traveling, so I have a USB-C cable or I have it docked to my desk, which is already powered. So I just, I'm sorry, MagSafe. We've got a little charging brick. Oh, we've got a polishing cloth as well. For the nano texture, it is a different type of display, so they do recommend that you do, of course, use one of their microfiber cloths. It makes sense. Oh, this nano texture on a MacBook? What? Oh, shoot, I'm so excited about this. Ah, I can't wait. I love the MacBook. It is it is a life-changing device to be able to do so much on this. I mean, the amount of things that I have thrown at the MacBook 14 inch over the last several years is pretty impressive. Okay, we'll set you up later. We have another one to unbox. All right, here's the six, 16? Yes, 16. Oh, wow. Okay, this is a little heavier. Here it is. It's been a while since I've seen the 16 inch MacBook. It is a beefy, beefy laptop. I know as soon as I'm gonna open this, I'm gonna miss having a big display. Yeah. Oh, and this one's also nano texture. This just feels like so much more of a computer, but basically you can get the same specs in both. The 14 inch will have a little less battery life, but for the most part, they're pretty much identical, which makes it easy to choose. Do you want a larger display or do you want something a little bit smaller, portable and compact? I have chosen to go the 14 inch route and I do not regret it. <gasps> just look at this. Nano texture is freaking fantastic. Yes. We've got our MagSafe cable, also color matched. Bigger power brick, love to see it. There it is. So here you can see the size difference between the 14 and the 16. It's pretty significant. It's also a little bit heavier as well. So again, depending upon what you plan on doing, if you travel a lot, 14 is English as the main language. Could be the way Press to go. Turn key. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's get these all set up and take them for a spin. Now, if I could only pick one of the three new Macs that just launched, it would definitely be the MacBook Pro for me. Mostly because I am always on the go and I have an incredible plug and play setup for my MacBooks in my office to three displays and all of my storage drives. Now, to be able to have this much power, it just feels like a crime, but it is a crime that I am so here for. Now, we have two sizes. We've got the 16 and the 14 inch in three different chip configurations. We've got the M4, the M4 Pro, and the M4 Max. And you can also choose from space black and silver, and I have both of the space black ones here 
the studio with nano texture display. Now, one of the most exciting things though is that they now have Thunderbolt 5 for speed transfers up to 120 gigabits a second on the M4 Pro and the M4 Max models. This is going to be so amazing for data transfers and editing from externals that I am so stoked. OWC has a bunch of Thunderbolt 5 drives that I will definitely be using for my future editing projects. There's a total of three Thunderbolt ports, an SD card reader, an HDMI, a MagSafe, and a headphone jack. And the battery life on these is just absolutely incredible. You can get up to 24 hours. I mean, that to me is just absolutely wild. Now, obviously, if you're doing processor intensive things, you're not gonna be able to edit on this for 24 hours straight, but this will definitely be a huge improvement. There is a new display option, like I had mentioned, that you can add nano texture to the glass, which I think pretty much in every single video I have said is so awesome. It's an additional $150 on the MacBooks, but if you do often work in bright lights, your windows or outside, this is going to be an absolute game changer. I promise you. This was a demo that I really wanted to try out because I'm always outside, I'm on the go, and with this new nano texture, you can definitely tell the difference between the regular glossy and the nano texture version. I mean, there's so many more reflections, even just like I can see myself in it. Like this one, nothing. It's almost like you're looking at a piece of paper or a a painting. Now when talking about displays, this is such an important feature for me because I love to dock my MacBook. With Thunderbolt 5, you'll be able to connect to Thunderbolt 5 docking and hubs with a single cable, which will give you instant access to even more high resolution displays, PCI expansion, external storage, and other peripherals. I cannot wait to get wild with Thunderbolt 5. Now, I think that my current setup that I have right now that I dock my MacBook M3 14 inch to is pretty great. But now with Thunderbolt 5, I'm gonna be able to really kind of like downsize what I've got over here to make it even more efficient and ah, oh, I'm so hyped. Speaking of setups, MacBook Pro with M4 and M4 Pro can drive two external displays by simultaneously supporting full native resolution on the built-in display, either through Thunderbolt with up to 6K resolution at 60 hertz or one external display up to 6K resolution at 60 hertz over Thunderbolt and one external display with up to 4K resolution at 144 hertz over HDMI. Did you get all that? Now with M4 Max, it can simultaneously support full native resolution on the built-in display and up to four external displays, up to three external external displays with 6K resolution at 60 hertz over Thunderbolt and one external display with up to 4K resolution at 144 hertz over HDMI. Did you get all of that as well? <laughs> so it's time to start testing these out. So I think for this review, I'm mostly gonna be testing out the 16 inch because for my personal device, I bought the spec'd out 14 inch. So I kind of wanna try out what it's like to have a little more screen real estate. Now when deciding on which one of these to get, the best news is that both of them, as far as specs are concerned, they're pretty much the same. Aside from slightly a little less battery life in the 14 inch. I mean, I cannot say enough great things about the 14 inch. I mean, it has been powering my life for the last year and I absolutely love it. So first things first, we're gonna get into some editing. So I'm currently working on the project that you are watching right here, right now, with a lot of 4K and some 8K footage from my Sony FX3 and my A1. Now editing on this, Mm, it is an absolute dream. It is so fast. There's never any downtime or waiting for things to render. It just freaking happens. I mean, these devices are now getting so good that it's hard for me to even stress test them on things that would normally tax these systems. It's a reviewer's, well, I wouldn't say it's a reviewer's nightmare. It's kind of like a reviewer's dream because ugh, it's just almost, it's too much. This is too much. I don't like, it's just, ah. It makes me so happy. This 16 inch MacBook Pro has the M4 Pro chip, and this allows us to use high power mode in the battery settings to get even more performance when needed. So if you're working on a large project that feels like it needs a little extra, you can head into the Apple menu. Now, if you're in macOS Sequoia, it will be right here in the menu bar, which is really nice. So for video editing or 3D projects, you'll be able to get smoother playback and faster exports. In this mode, the fans may power on depending if your Mac is connected to power or not. Really, like a little bit of fan noise is nothing compared to those old school Intel Macs that sounded like a space shuttle taking off during every export. So I went to set up the new M4 MacBook how I had my previous M3 and I kind of forgot something. Since the one that I have to review is not the M4 Max, the fully spec'd out version, I'm not able to run my normal setup because I can only do two of these displays plus the MacBook display running at the same time. So for the sake of this video, we're gonna just be using these two, but with the Pro Max version, I would be able to use my normal setup using all of these displays. So I think that is one thing to consider if you do wanna run a setup like this with higher and displays, then you're definitely gonna go for the M4 Max. So we'll just focus on these two for now. 
So using this new scene removal mask, it's pretty cool. And it's kind of wild because this is two 8K clips. In between, I have my text. Now I think normally if that was gonna be using this video, I would work on my typography a little more. But for the sake of this video, this is what it looks like. And you really didn't have to do anything at all. I just dragged the filter right on top of it. Oh, and yeah. here it is. Our, it just feels like a crime, but it is a crime that I am so here for. Now we have two seconds. Actually, we're gonna do this in better quality. <laughs> and here we go. To have this much power, it just feels like a crime, <gasps> but it is a crime that I am so here for. Now we have two sizes, we've got the 16. That was so great. That was even in better quality instead of better performance. I'm super impressed. <sighs> this is making me more excited to get the max version, even though this one is perfectly capable to be able to have my third monitor. This is gonna be an editing dream. I am pretty hyped though about getting to spend some time checking out the new Mac OS Sequoia because I am always one that waits to update because I have a ton of plugins in Final Cut that sometimes are not compatible right away and it drives me just wild trying to get everything working and syncing. But so far, everything seems to be going very smoothly. I've been having such FOMO seeing everyone updated to Sequoia. So, all right, we're here. It finally feels safe and I can't wait to really dive in. Apple intelligence has been pretty much the only thing that Apple has been talking about. And finally it has arrived for Mac OS Sequoia, iPad and our lovely iPhones. But not all of the features are out yet. So I'm gonna show you a couple of the things like summarize, which is, it's so, easy. So I have my M4 MacBook Pro script that I wrote and I'm just going to hit this little Apple intelligence button. I can proofread, rewrite, I probably should proofread it because I wrote this quite quickly and quite sleepily. So let's see all of the mis- okay, I've got a few things that it's a little upset. 73 changes. Oh, missing punctuation. Okay, so we're, we're doing punctuation and stuff here. That's something that I did not even consider when writing this. <laughs> now I think I might want to change this to be a little more friendly. Let's do a little friendly read. And you can see that it's highlighting everything and it happens pretty quickly considering there's a lot of text here. There's a lot going on. Look at this, the new MacBooks are out and I'm torn between the three. Oh, maybe I should have done this before because I think this is better than what I had written. Oh, we have to learn to work with AI, not against it. I'm going to have to embrace it. This is so long, let's summarize it. We can do a summary, key points, a list or a table. Let's just do key points. And there it is. It is populating from my script that I wrote. I love the notes app. It is like my favorite thing ever. So the fact that they're still adding cool new features to this is so awesome. So for example, right now I am inside of the notes app and I'm recording everything that I'm saying. And this will now take this recording, put it inside of the notes app and also has the ability to summarize everything that I'm talking about. So let's hit stop, even though this is only like 15 seconds and let's see what it could do. And here's my summary, recording audio and notes app, Summarizing content. I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. We also have the new Siri, which is located up here. So you can type to Siri or you can use your voice. Find me a recipe to make that includes cookies. So you can talk or type to Siri and the chat GPT features are not integrated yet, but they will be coming in a later release. So look for that. Now the other thing that I'm super into, this is kind of a Mac OS Sequoia feature, is the linking your Mac to your iPhone. So you can basically mirror what's on your phone to your Mac. We're gonna use iPhone mirroring. It's just an app that connects directly to it and it is unable. Okay, so um, I have a lot of iPhones here, so we need to pick the right one. <laughs> I do like that this makes it pretty secure. It double checks that you have your phone with you so that you can unlock it. You know, unless you're being held hostage, I guess you don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> the other thing that's interesting is you can also get notifications from your phone. So this can be a little aggressive if you have a lot of notifications, like I tend to. And this is also triple secure with the fingerprint to unlock your actual computer. So here it is. Phone mirroring will connect when iPhone is no longer in use. Okay, so we're gonna shut my phone. It's locked and now it's connecting. It's on my computer. So let's see what we've got going on in Audible. Okay, I've only got 12 hours left of House of Sky and Breath, only 12 hours. Yeah, I've got some listening to do. Let's see how my glucose levels are. All right, we had a little spike from, from dinner, but we're, we're good, we're, we're holding strong. <laughs> 
Let's see what's happening on TikTok. What's Laura doing? Okay. Lauren is ready for Christmas already. <laughs> It's almost 10 o'clock. If you can't tell, I'm now scrolling TikTok on my phone, on my computer, and it looks like I need to charge my phone. I usually go to my computer to stop scrolling, but now I'm gonna be able to be on my computer and scroll at the same time. We're all in trouble. So you can see right here, it says iPhone in use. This phone is being used from Justine's MacBook Pro. So when we unlock, it now disconnects. So iPhone mirroring has ended due to iPhone use. One of the biggest AI updates is in photos. You can now do an enhanced search so you can use your natural language to find images. You'll also be able to change the photographic styles. That was something new in the iPhone 16. But up here is what we really wanna talk about. This is the cleanup tool. So with this, it's gonna identify some things in this image, which it's probably gonna get a little confused because there's so much going on here that it's not really gonna be sure what I wanna delete, but it is going to give me some suggestions. And if I don't like those suggestions, I can highlight my own things to remove. Oh, it wants me to go away. No, I'm staying, sorry. We're gonna remove this tripod though from this shot. Oh, <gasps> gone. Okay, let's remove this from the wall. Gone. Let's remove this. Gone. Gone. Should I remove myself? Oh, gone. <laughs> Okay, that works pretty well. I'm impressed. This feature also works on iOS 18 for iPad and on your iPhone, so check it out. One of the most exciting, fun features isn't out yet, but I did get a demo of it at an Apple event here. This is Image Playground, so it'll let you create custom images and custom emojis. It worked really well from what I saw, so this is gonna be so much fun to use when it's out. The editing photos in Lightroom was such a breeze. I opened up a ton of them, made a bunch of edits, and then applied them to the entire library. It took pretty much no time at all, and it felt super smooth. So when you think about gaming, normally people don't think of Mac first, but we are closing in on all of that changing. Cyber Cyberpunk 2077 is officially coming to Mac. This is pretty wild because it is such a huge graphic intense game that it goes to show you that our little Macs here are all grown up. I did test out some gaming. I played some Resident Evil and Stray and it all felt super smooth. Playback was incredible. I also tested it out in high power mode and it still played back really well. I'm not really sure if I could tell a huge difference or not. So either way, it ran great. With the M4's GPU, we're getting up to 2X faster ray tracing. So games that are enabled with ray tracing will look even more realistic. The thing that I've been so impressed with is the battery life on these devices. And right now I'm playing this video game, Stray, without plugging it in. It's on battery. It also prioritizes game mode. So this is gonna allow it to be a more seamless and a smooth experience. And everything so far is looking pretty incredible. <laughs> I've been wanting to play this game for a really long time. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. So this game is actually just in the App Store, which is pretty cool, so it's super easy to download and install. There's also the Apple Arcade, and there's a ton of games in there as well. Center Stage is here. This is so cool because not only do we have Center Stage, but we also have Desk View. Hey, Bryn! So I'm testing out this new camera. Can you see me moving around? Yeah. Is the camera following me? Yeah. Isn't that cool? It's called center stage. I'm in the cabinet. Why are you in the cabinet? Watch this. I can do this thing called desk view. Can you see my desk? Wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. There's a guy behind you. <laughs> oh, oh, you me? Oh, that's Nathan. Hi, Brent. <laughs> I had so much fun testing out the new MacBook Pros with M4. These devices are truly becoming so powerful that most of you will never be able to fully even use the entire system to its max performance. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I would love to hear what you think about all of the new Mac products that just launched. If you wanna check out my videos on the new M4 iMac and the M4 Mac Mini, be sure to do so as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.